Welcome to 1856 First Church Pella, Iowa podcast. Well, it's Thursday, May 16th. Brianne, it's great to see you. How are you doing today? I'm doing well, Pastor Bob. How are you? I'm doing great. We had a big morning here at church, huh? We sure did. Yeah, it was great. Yeah, the Sending Network, this new denomination we're a part of, we had... Uh, A network gathering at our church. Yes, and we had a new church join. Yeah, we had a new church, New Creation Church from Mm -hmm. Newton, pastored by Robbie Robinson, now part of the network, up to 13 churches. Very exciting. I think we had about 75 people here this morning. Yeah, we did. We had a good crowd. Yeah. So uh, we had everybody split up to tables, and uh, we played a couple mixer games together, but we uh, had good times together by affinity. So children's people with children's youth, et cetera, so on. Was your table yes. valuable? Yes, I really enjoy getting to have conversations with these women from other churches and kind of share some best practices. Yeah, that's good. I mean, uh, I was at a pastor filled table. Uh, there were five of us at our table and it was really good. And, um, you know, we took time to pray for each other. That was really, really mm-hmm. good. And. Uh, but then added to this, uh, we talked about missions, yes. and uh, it was great to have Scott and Becky Dykstra here, who are going off to Japan, and uh-huh. then make a presentation. We talked about Pastor Samuel Ko- Kowalia in Uganda, yeah. and uh, Brian did a great job uh, making a presentation, too. Yeah, he sure did. I really liked his intro into the missions, and then the heart, just hearing from Scott and Becky and their heart for wanting to go to Japan. Yeah, it was great. You know, we had a couple here that was down here from Newton, and they're going to be missionaries. I, I This is the first Sending Network event that they had been to, and um, they had no idea that we were going to talk about missions this morning, and they were so blessed that we were talking about the 1040 window yeah. because right now they're in that prayer time that they're asking the Lord, which country is it that you want us to go to? I, I just found that positively exhilarating to know that they're going yeah. to be going off and, and being missionaries. Yeah, I'm very excited to see who else will answer the call. Yeah, there's certainly more of a trend, praise the Lord, of seeking to bring the gospel to people who've never heard the gospel before. Yes, well, I'm excited too because Scott and Becky have agreed to come on the podcast. They are. Yeah, we should uh-huh. be hearing from them in the next couple of weeks. That'll be awesome. And, mm-hmm. you know, this morning, Brian gave a, a, a passion little pre-talk to them about the importance of uh, our church engaging in missions. And then they're off. They're, they're on a trip. Did you hear that? No, I didn't. Well, you know what? All the terminology is different for an old guy like me. Um, We were so poor when we had our first child, you know, we couldn't buy a wrestling jacket for a grasshopper, (laughs) and that's a small fit. But now what the younger generation calls it is a baby moon. Oh, So they're going on a baby moon. Oh, very nice. Did you find out what this means? Well, you know, I guess it's the last time you go out before you have the baby and -hmm. you go on a trip. So they're going to the Ark over there in Kentucky. Oh, that'll be fun. I've been there. It's a really neat place. You know, Brian's pretty tight. I'm thinking he just doesn't want to pay for three admissions so he could tell his uh, his (laughs) child later that they actually got to go to the Ark. Mm -hmm. But they just are having a hard time remembering it. Oh, yes. Uh huh. We've Uh, done trips like that, too. Should be should be a good time. Well. Yeah, Yeah, they'll be back, I don't know, sometime next week. Oh, that'll be fun to hear about their adventures. Yeah, and you know, it's always good here to be in the studio with uh, Mike Melody. He's over Mm -hmm. there with the engineer earphones on, and he's doing a good job. And you know, they're expecting a child too. Yes. What I haven't asked is, when you're having your second child, do you still have a baby moon? Oh, I don't know. It depends if you have really good grandparents, I think. Oh, yeah, because then they'll take care of the first Mm -hmm. child. Yep. All right. I think he's won the lottery in that area. Yeah, right. Well, sounds good. Hey, a uh, few announcements. Well, we talked about the Sending Network a little bit, but mm-hmm. I heard uh, you had some family members come back a little late last night, really bouncing. What was that yes, all about? Yes, yes. Um, they got to go with Mosaic up to Sky Zone as a end of the year celebration. Sky Zone. Now, tell me a little bit about what Sky Zone is. Well, it is a giant trampoline park. So... Not your average bouncing. Sounds like great fun. As a matter of fact, I love trampolines. And uh, I went to say goodbye to all the kids and their uh, their parents and sponsors to go. And I, I saw Dr. Becky Dykstra. She yes. said, are, are you going to go, Pastor Bob? And I said, well, I'd love to go. And mm-hmm. I would have considered going if I knew that there was a physician that was going to be going too. Yes. Well, I asked Hannah Melody the same question. 
since she's expecting. Yeah, I hope she wasn't on the trampoline. I don't think she was bouncing. Yeah, mm-hmm. no, no, it's a lot of fun. Well, hey, I'm glad our mm-hmm. kids could do it. They went up to West yeah. Des Moines. My husband had a great time. He was one of the, he drove our very big van that we lovingly yeah. call Black Thunder and took some kids up there and he had a great time. He uh, came back a little sore. Well, that's good. My wife and I took a field trip last night uh, up to Costco and uh, that's mm-hmm. a big, you know, a journey up there. and. Mm-hmm. And uh, we had a luxurious meal afterwards. We haven't done this in a long time, but we had Ooh. hot dogs from Costco. <laughs> so the total cost of the meal was three dollars. Wow, a buck fifty a piece. Big spender. I, I think we could live off of that. But they're also as long. And they're very long too. Very good. We ate them while we were driving in the car, mm-hmm. and it was a personal feat for me to get home and find no mustard on my shirt. Hey, that is impressive. It is pretty impressive. I'm sure Patty appreciated it, she too. She appreciates when I eat neat any time. Yeah. And so um, you want to talk about uh, what I talked about on Sunday in uh, Revelation? Sure. Yeah. Um, we were trying to recap into um, Revelation 6, and then you brought us into Revelation 7. But one thing you said that I thought was really um, neat is that we're taking time to study this book. And we've already gone uh, through two years worth of study, and so now we will continue for two more years. Uh, but then just reiterating what you said about Revelation 6 is that it was the initiation of the great day of the Lord, the forces of nature. Um, And then this past weekend, you talked about Revelation 7 as this interlude, a break. Um, 144,000 was a number, which we'll get to a little bit later. But um, I wondered if you could uh, start with, um, you were planning this sermon back before October happened in Israel. And you said, this is a time where we should sit up and listen. And I was wondering if you could recap that for everyone. Yeah. Well, first of all, going at what you said initially, you know, just about mm-hmm. doing these series on Revelation. So a couple of years ago, we did a series called the seven letters. That's a nice, easy division for that first part. There's more mm-hmm. than the seven letters there, but that's that, that's kind of the nuggets. Mm-hmm. So this year we're doing the seven seals, even though in chapter four and five, we get this picture of the throne room of the Lord that we go into significant there. And then, of course, uh, next year we'll do the trumpets. There, there's there's uh, the trumpet judgments. And then the following year, we'll do the bowl judgments, of which that will take us all the way to the new heavens and the new earth, which mm-hmm. will be very exciting. So, you know, on October 7th, there was this brutal, terrible attack into Israel by a terrorist group uh, known as Hamas. It was awful. It was dreadful. We have people that we know over there in Israel. We talked to them. They confirmed it was awful and it was dreadful. The worst attack on Israel since literally World War II, the Holocaust. And um, and so people will wonder, well, what, what's going on there? Why is this happening to Israel? Is this significant? And of course, we have a polarization in America. I would say the majority of people are very pro-Israel. They're our ally. Um, they're a democracy in the Middle East uh, amongst many non-democracy, non-democracies there. And so I believe that Israel plays a prominent role as we look at our eschatology. Mm-hmm. And this is one of the reasons that when something like that happens, we have to sit up and listen. Do we know exactly where it falls into end times eschatology? No, no. But something's going on. Mm -hmm. Why does so much of the world dislike Israel? Why are there these protests going on in campuses throughout America about Israel? This is a country that's the size of the state of New Jersey. Mm -hmm. They're a democracy. Mm -hmm. And the forces of evil that came against us, these are not good people. These are people who have brought terror to that land and they will bring terror to whatever land that they're in what's going on Mm -hmm. well i can't help but think that what we have introduced in uh the chapter that we studied this past week these jewish evangelists that i believe are going to be risen up this Mm 144,000. i believe that god is going to use these 144,000 sealed people from israel to uh, wage one of the greatest revivals we've ever seen in the history of humanity. Mm -hmm. And people are gonna come to know Jesus at a tremendous rate, 
And this is going to usher in the second coming of Christ. Mm. Now, what does the devil not want? Right. The second coming of Christ. Because be assured, the devil's read the end of the book. And when Christ comes back, the devil is going to be flushed into the lake of fire for eternity. Mm -hmm. And so why wouldn't the devil do everything in his power to get rid of Israel? And I believe that's what we need to sit up and listen about when we see this huge stampede coming up against Israel. Mm -hmm. Honestly, I don't want to turn this into, into a political podcast, but we already know now that over 50% of the protesters on these campuses aren't students. Mm -hmm. They are paid protesters who are coming in. Why would somebody go to this length mm -hmm. to protest against Israel? Most of these people, if they were asked anything about the history of Palestine and Israel, wouldn't be able to tell you anything. Mm -hmm. Something bigger is going on. And I would suggest people consult their scriptures. Hmm. Good. Um, you went on after that. That was a great introduction. Uh, and you said we need to pay attention to some of the wording here where John starts to say the word after this moving into another vision. And what was that vision that he saw? Yeah, when you're reading through the book of Revelation, um, we, we sometimes can lose sight of the fact that these are visions that John is having, okay? Mm -hmm. And so um, it's, it's, it's not a continual singular vision. He has a variety of visions. Mm -hmm. And so when we see those words after this in Revelation, that is usually an indication, okay, I've had a break from the last one. Mm -hmm. However long he got a breather for, I don't know, but he got some sort of a breather. So when we were looking at um, the, the great day of the Lord and the earthquake and the sun turning black and the mm -hmm. moon turning red and, and meteor showers and islands and mountains moving, okay, this, this was big. Mm -hmm. I'm sure John's mouth was wide open, and then that vision ended. Oh, he got to take a breath. And now the Bible says, after this, now he's going to get another one. Mm -hmm. And it starts out with him seeing four angels. Now, how he sees this, mm -hmm. I don't know. But the Bible says he does. So somehow he was allowed to see this. Four angels, the four corners of the earth, holding back wind. Yeah. Wow. And so we can immediately ask the question, well, what does that mean? Well, let's go with the literal, for instance. How about that it means they're holding back mm -hmm. the wind? And, and certainly the text gives us indication of that, that nothing's blowing around. There's no trees that are moving, et cetera, and so on. So think about this. If the angels are holding back the wind... That would mean there's no cloud movement. Mm -hmm. That would mean there's no waves on the ocean. There is perfect stillness. Now, the last vision was absolutely a cacophony of disasters right. going on. And now, stillness. Almost eerie. Kind of like yeah. those people who have uh, been before a tornado. Sometimes right. you have this really eerie mm -hmm. stillness that or in the eye of the storm yeah, yeah mm -hmm. or like the eye of a hurricane mm -hmm. and so they're holding this back now i believe we have every right and responsibility to take that literally but there's also something else coming in those winds hmm. so after we see this uh you start talking uh about chapter six where the ungodly were dealt with but then then chapter seven the godly were dealt with. Can you go into that a little bit? Yeah. So as God's judgment is being poured out in chapter six with the sixth seal, I mean, they are literally running out into the open areas because these, these, uh, these meteors, uh, asteroids, whatever is going to pour down. And the Bible says stars are coming from the heavens onto the earth. They're seeking relief from that. There is judgment that is happening to them. Now, as we turn into chapter seven, what we're seeing is this is protection for the godly. So there's 144,000 that are gathered together and they are going to be sealed. In mm -hmm. other words, they're going to be protected. There's a task that they're called to do and be a part mm -hmm. of, and they are going to be protected. And I believe that those 
godly people are going to, they've already survived to this point, they're going to survive the seals, seal seven and the trumpets and the bowls. Mm -hmm. And I believe that they will probably be there for the beginning of the millennial kingdom. But they, the godly now are protected. And what it's important Mm -hmm. to know is this. Is those 144,000 are going to be sealed for a specific task. But make no mistake, Brianne, you Mm -hmm. and me and Mike over there with the headphones on (laughs) and the church of Jesus Christ, we are also sealed. Now, that doesn't mean we're not going to die, okay? But we are sealed. The Lord says, those children who are mine, I'm never going to let go of. So we also are in that sealing. But these people are going to be sealed for a specific task. Hmm, That's good. Uh, So as we were talking about the ominous, you know, we're holding back the four corners, the angels are, and then all of a sudden there's this fifth angel that appears. And what was this angel doing? Yeah, you know, we've got a lot of numbers that are mentioned in this chapter. And of course, I am a great proponent. Let's take things literally. So we got four angels at the beginning, four corners of the earth. That makes sense. Now we've got a fifth angel coming on. The fifth angel knows that these four angels are are holding something back. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, And in addition to the wind, there is judgment that is coming as well. And so this judgment that's coming, basically this fifth angel comes on the scene and says, wait, wait, you cannot let go of holding this back until we seal these saints. And so there's a sealing that's going to go on, not a sealing like what's over Mm -hmm. your head in a room, but an S-E-A-L-I-N-G, a a sealing that's going to go on. God's protection is going to wrap around these these 144,000. So that's the task of that fifth angel that comes on the scene. Mm. Yeah, you had a good analogy on Sunday for the ceiling. Would you mind sharing that again? Well, you know what happened is in, in, in those days, and people would have understood this, a mm-hmm. king typically had a ring, a, a signet ring, and, and it had a, a seal on it. So when a king would send a message, there would be a waxy substance that would be put on that scroll, mm-hmm. and it would be sealed with that ring. And so if you were a messenger and you came on an, uh, uh, an outpost or something else, and people wanted to ask you, well, where are you going? I'm on the business of the king. And you would show them the king's mm-hmm. seal, and they knew better than to mess with you. Right. That was your point of protection, because if somebody messes with the messenger mm-hmm. of a king with their seal, they would be in deep trouble. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Then you go on in here and talk about uh, John, and he was looking in a particular direction. About in a. Do you want to cover that for us? Yeah. So I think the details always matter in a text. So this fifth angel came up out of the east. Well, we see in the scriptures that the angel came up out of the east. We should ask ourselves, well, where's the east? Mm-hmm. I mean. If we're sitting here in Pella, Iowa, and we say something is coming out of the east, well, we could look east, and what do we see east of here? Well, if you go all the way east from here, we're going to find the Mississippi River. Mm -hmm. We're going to find the state of Illinois. Uh, Or you can go all the way to the east and go to the east part of our country. So directions mean something. So here's John. He's on the island of Patmos, outside of Greece. Mm -hmm. Now, he looks east. What is he going to see? Israel. Mm -hmm. That land of Israel. And I think that's significant Mm -hmm. because this angel is coming up out of Israel. And this is where salvation came through Jesus Christ. And now this angel is going to be a part of the sealing of these evangelists Mm -hmm. who are going to go into the world and bring the message of salvation to the entire earth. Mm -hmm. The east is significant. Mm -hmm. He doesn't say north, south or west. He says, East. Yeah. When you were talking about the the ceiling and the king's thing, you also had talked about servants. So who are these servants? Yeah. So there's a lot of um, debate over who the 144,000 are. Again, I fall back on just taking this literally. Mm-hmm. So when I see 144,000, it sounds like a specific number to me. Mm -hmm. It's not like a a number drawn out of a hat. It's 144,000. So if we take that literally, and then, of course, he goes on to list 12,000 from this tribe, 12,000 from this tribe, 12 times, it equals Mm 144,000. It's not a nebulous number, okay? So the Lord somehow is going to gather 12,000 from each of these tribes together. I don't know how he's going to do that. 
I don't know. Um, some people would like to say, well, the 10 tribes of Israel uh, to the north, that northern uh, country that was taken off by Assyria, mm-hmm. that they're no more. Well, we also know from history that many people from the north even migrated to the south. Those people mm. were faithful to Yahweh and they migrated to the south. And so the idea that there are 12,000 of each of these tribes in existence in the world when this happens, that's not hard for me to believe. Mm-mm. The fact that God would bring them supernaturally together is not hard for me to believe. I'm fascinated by what this would look like, right. that these 144,000 would be gathered. I mean, you go to some college football stadiums, some hold, I, I remember like the Rose Bowl in California, holds a little over 100,000. So add 50,000 to that. Yeah. That's that, that My mind gets around that. It's good think, visual. All right, hmm. yeah, they're all there. And they're somehow going to be sealed, and then their marching orders are going to be go and make disciples. Hmm. Yeah, that was a really good visual. Thanks. Yeah, you'd also kind of talked about how, uh, you know, God, he's great at math. And so (laughs) he invented it. He invented it. That's right. So it seems like we're, you know, we're talking about some tense times and it's getting a little ominous. So have we kind of reached the, the climax in this particular series or we got more to come? Oh, there's more to come. Yes, there is. <laughs> you know, um, in this chapter, uh, next week, what mm-hmm. we're going to do is go into the last half of chapter seven. So I'll just I'll just give a little bit of a picture into what we're going to go to. This week, we had 144,000 very alive people that are going to go on a mission. I don't know how much time takes place between the passage that we studied last week and the passage we were going to study this week. Mm -hmm. But then we're going to get a picture of, in heaven, martyred saints. Mm -hmm. And these are saints that come out of the tribulation. And it's going to be important for people to note, we'll talk about this on Sunday, while there's great specificity with numbers of the 144,000, there is not specificity to the mm-hmm. number of martyred saints that we're going to see in heaven. Mm-hmm. And so that just is that contrast in numbers, specific mm-hmm. and not specific. It's just like if I hand you a pile of money and I say there's $50 here, mm-hmm. you would count it out. Yes, there's $50. If I brought in six hefty bags full of money and I said this is is for you, Brianne. There's gobs and gobs of money in there. Thank you. Could you say how much there was in there? No, no. because I haven't given any specificity to it. Mm-hmm. You can count it later, and if they were all dollar bills, it'd be this much. If they were $100 bills, it'd be this much. Mm-hmm. So we go to a part of Scripture that's going to say thousands upon thousands, mm-hmm. and we're just going to get this picture, and it's a beautiful picture of a mass of people who've been saved mm. by the blood of the lamb. Yeah. Well, you finished uh, the sermon with a really good quote. Um, I believe it's your quote. It's not my quote. Oh, okay. Any good quote is not my quote. <laughs> well, you were talking about all the specificity and it's like, hey, if literal sense makes sense, seek no other sense or you may end up with nonsense. Yeah, somebody gave that to me some years ago. I really, really appreciated it in terms of reading the Bible. I thought a great old pastor who's still on the radio in many parts of the country, J. Vernon McGee, I thought that quote was his, and maybe he used it. Um, But I I, I looked it up on the internet. I I couldn't find the person who said it. So, But what's so good about that quote when we read the scriptures, you know what? If the scriptures are making sense, don't add any additional Mm -hmm. sense. Because sometimes we create... I believe, nonsense in doing that. Mm -hmm. And so we should always seek to accept the literal nature. We call it in our hermeneutics, hermeneutics meaning uh, the science of interpreting the scriptures, uh, a historical grammatical hermeneutic. And so we want to take it literally, you know, first of all, in the context that it was given. And then what we do is we apply it to now. Mm -hmm. And um, so... To me, 144,000 means 144,000. Mm-hmm. To me, angels holding back wind mean angels holding back wind. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and so it actually helps people understand a book of the Bible that they have struggled with for so long. Mm-hmm. 
because people are oftentimes trying to say, well, no, that doesn't mean that. For instance, some will say the 144,000 are the church. Well, you look at that passage all day and you could say, well, it doesn't look like the church. It looks like 144,000 Jewish people. And if you keep saying it's the church, well, it's how is it the church if it's if it's people from every one of the tribes? Mm -hmm. So I have found great relief, great freedom in seeking to take the scriptures literally. I encourage that to Mm -hmm. the people I lead and teach. Yes, absolutely. Thank you for that. I'm looking forward to Sunday. Uh, We had a great last Sunday, too. We did some celebrating of graduates and the Lord's Supper. uh, The Lord's Supper. Uh, We honored mothers. Mothers. Yes. Yes. Mother's Day. Great Mm -hmm. Mother's Day. That was great. Um, The video was very, very true and accurate and funny. Yeah. So I enjoyed that. But this Sunday, we also get to celebrate something else. You know, we've had something uh, every Sunday special, don't get me wrong, but we've Mm -hmm. had a variety of things that we've gotten to, um, yeah, to remember different people we're celebrating, different days. Uh, This particular Sunday, I'm so proud of my my good brother in the Lord, Ward Van Dyke. Mm -hmm. Uh, Ward is a farmer here in town, a, a great man of God came to me, I don't know, three years ago, maybe four years ago, can't remember exactly, and really wanted to get Mm -hmm. into our commissioned pastor program. And I feel in a calling into that. He says, I don't know to do what. He says, uh, I love people, want to care Mm -hmm. for people. I believe this is where the Lord's bringing me. I'm not going to give up farming, but can I uh, pursue this? So Mm -hmm. I really admired him for doing this. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's taken all the courses that he's needed to take. He's taken, he's written papers that he never thought he would be writing at this Mm -hmm. age of his life. He's taken exams. He's done a great job with the whole thing. He's finished that up. And now Mm -hmm. we're going to commission him this week. He's going to keep farming, but he is going to be commissioned as a um, pastor of visitation within Mm -hmm. our church. Um, It's an unpaid staff position, but Ward is going to do a tremendous job. I think he's committing to about 20, 25 hours per month Mm -hmm. uh, to do this. We are thrilled. Anytime Mm -hmm. we raise up leaders within the church, I truly believe the harvest is going to increase. Yes. And so I hope we can celebrate God's goodness in the life of Ward this Mm -hmm. week. And um, just so grateful and uh, honored to serve with him. Yeah, he's him and his wife have been a blessing to our family and um, our kids. And so I know he'll be a blessing to others as well. So I'm excited for him to join the staff, but in a kind of volunteer type role. It's great. And he always brings his dog to church. You yes. know, Colt sits out there in the back of the uh-huh. pickup and, um, yep, just waits for his dad to come back out. Yeah. It's good, good family. Um, well, we also have other things to celebrate. I was kind of excited. Uh, we have now been on the air for a month. Can you believe it? I can't. <laughs> Except I've been sitting here every Seems week with like you. Seems <laughs> like almost yesterday. Yes. But um, we had a couple new locations added. We had somebody out from Seattle, Washington. Listening, listening to in. us from Seattle. Yes. And wow, over in Ohio, raining. too. In Ohio, too. That's yeah. my birth state. So maybe people okay. realize I was born in Ohio and are listening. Yeah. So, I mean, if people are enjoying it, uh, they now have the option to message us. They no can kidding. click on to it. And if so, if they're enjoying it or they have a question, they can send it in to us. Beautiful. Yes. But uh, I hope people will come on Sunday and celebrate with us. It's going to be a great day. Yeah. Service is at 930. So don't forget. Service is 930. Uh, folks, thanks for joining us today. Have a wonderful, super great, fantastic day. God bless you.